Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy Podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We'll probably discuss the Mantor conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. I'm Jamie Holden, the Mantor Guy, and I want to thank you for taking the time to join us and listen this week. Well, this week we're going to bring you the Session 1 message from our 2022 Central PA Mantor. Pastor Jeff Marshall, the Pendel Ministry Network Secretary Treasurer, brought a strong challenge to the men in Session 1. He shared with the men that God never called his sons to stop or be complacent. We are called to go and function on the power of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Jeff said, boogity, 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 let's go racing, boys. Let's do God's work. The altar was packed for his altar calls. The men responded with a desire to be filled with more of God's power. So enjoy Jeff's challenge, and we'll be back with you shortly. Don't you just love that sound? That sound just puts, ah, gets me fired up. It, it just, every time I hear it, I get excited. I just hear that horsepower, hear that moving. Hearing those cars going like that, you know, NASCAR engines are large. They're about they're they're 350 cubic inches, which is about 5.87 liters, and they can get up to 750 horsepower. The average car has about 100 to, to 200. Some SUVs have 300 horsepower, but that power that is behind those cars are incredible. NASCAR engines have extremely large. Uh, radio cam profiles which open the intake valves much faster and keep them open longer. This allows more air to be packed into the cylinders, cylinders for high speed. The intake and exhaust are turned or tuned and tested to provide a boost a certain engine at certain engine speeds. They're also designed for low restrictions. There are no mufflers or catalytic converters to slow down the exhaust. They have carburetors that can have huge volumes of air and fuel. No fuel injectors on these engines. They have high-intensity programmable ignition systems, so the spark timing can be customized to provide the most powerful uh, engine possible. All the systems like coolant pumps, oil pumps, steering pumps, and alternators are designed to run at sustained high speeds and temperatures. These cars were made with power to go fast. They weren't made to go slow. They were made to go fast. And that's what, I don't know if you've ever been, have any of you ever been to a NASCAR race? There's nothing like going around that when those cars come down the first time. It shakes the whole stadium and it shakes you up. I had the privilege back several years ago to drive a NASCAR. And I was at Pocono Raceway and, and, and there's nothing like it. And my church sent me there. Uh, for my 50th birthday. And I'm telling you what, man, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I still get excited when I think about it. And, and the thing about it that's cool is you go through some classes, you do some ride arounds, and then you get to ride. There's a pace car, and then there's two student cars. And I was the second student car. But what's cool is the car in front of me wasn't going fast enough, and they put a flag out that I could pass that car. And I got to pass it. I'm telling you guys, man, I get excited when I just think about it. It is what, you know, it's just like, you, you. I got out of my car when I came in. I got out of my car, and my wife was, I was like, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. My arms were burning, and, and, but what's cool is when, when you come in, they push a button to see how many horsepowers you got up to, and I hit a speed of, what, are you ready for this? 165 miles an hour. <laughs> Can you imagine driving 165 miles an hour and not having to worry about brakes? Because the thing is that one time I hit the brake suddenly going into one of the turns and it threw me up the track. And I'm proud to say, I'm going to be proud for a minute. Can I be proud for a minute this morning? Is that okay? Can I do it? Come on. I was the fastest speed of the day. Yeah. <laughs> fastest speed of the day. That's right. I keep this in my bedroom above my bed. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, but man. What an experience to go that fast to do that. NASCARs are fast because they're made to go fast. The engines are powerful. They make the engines to make the car go fast. They put that power in that engine so the cars will go fast and to accomplish the goal of winning the race. That's the whole idea. Let me tell you something. 
When we were created, God created us to go. He didn't create us to sit still. He didn't create us to be, to be complacent. He created us to go. And he created us with a power of his presence in our lives to help us to do it, to help it to take place. We are told in scriptures to pick up the cross daily and go. It doesn't say just pick up the cross. I'm glad it doesn't. You know, we're told to pick up the cross daily and go. And I love in Joshua chapter 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, Moses said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River and go into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. What he said is, hey, God is saying to Joshua, Moses was a great leader. Moses is gone now. You're it. So get the people ready to go. Get the people ready to go. Get the people ready to go into the land that I'm giving you. And I'm going to tell you this morning, God is telling us, get ready to go. Get ready to go. Now, y'all got to talk back to me. Because I'm going to preach for three hours unless you talk back to me. So, Jamie, can I do that? Is that all right? But listen, listen. God is commanding us to go. And God told Joshua, hey, I'm going to be with you. He said, be strong and courageous because it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy, but I'm going to be with you everywhere you go. In fact, everywhere your foot goes, I'll be there. I will be there for you, so get ready to go. Gentlemen, this morning, we're going to start our engines, and I I want to encourage you to be empowered to do what God has called you to do. God hasn't called you just to come here and sit and to go home and do nothing. For too long, that's the way it's been. Things are messed up. I don't need to tell you that, man. Things are messed up, and, and, and we got to get going for the journey. And, and I love the, the start. If you, I, I'm a NASCAR fan. Well, I, I mean, I'll be honest. I used to be a NASCAR fan. They've come up with some of these rules now that kind of restrict the speed of the cars, and they have mandatory uh, wimpy brakes in there and, and, and stuff. And, and I just, I, I'm not as big as a fan as I used to be. But I love, I, I love Daryl Waltrip one of my favorites. And he calls the races. And when, when a race is get it, getting ready to start, he, I love what he says. Darrell Waltrip says this. Go next slide. He, he, he says, he said, boogity, 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 let's go racing, boys. <laughs> boogity, 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 let's go racing, boys. Nobody says it like DW. But we're going to go racing. Today, we're going to take off. And I'm believing God is going to do something in your life that he's never done before. I am believing God is going to empower you with his presence And with his power, the Holy Spirit, for you to make a difference in your home, in your community, in your church, in your state, in the nation. I'm believing God to do some great things today. He has a plan for you. He has a plan. And the thing is, God has called you and God has a plan for you. But what are we doing with the plan God has for us? Get this. Do you know that most of the work done in church is done by women? 70 to 80% of churches are women. They do most of the work. And and, and a lot of us, we just kind of, you know, when there's a Bible study, women come and bring their husbands. When there's a prayer meeting, women come and drag their husbands. And and it's just like, you know, hmm. God hasn't called us to be complacent. God has called us to get in the race. God has given us a command to go and to do something. But how do we respond? God called Moses and he said, how about Aaron? You know, and often that's where we are. God will call you. How about somebody else? I don't speak so well. And then there's Jonah. We know the story of Jonah. He didn't listen. He decided to go his own way and do his own thing. Well, big fish, you know, swallowed him, spit him up, put him on land where he was supposed to go in the first place. So often that's the way it goes. And then in Joshua chapter 2, it's one of the most tragic scriptures in the Bible. In Joshua chapter 2, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110, and they buried him in the land of his inheritance, in Temnaheres, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gosh. And the whole generation had been gathered to the ancestors. Here it is. Another generation grew up who neither knew the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. A generation grew up that didn't know what God had done. 
As a result of that, it says in 1 Samuel 3, 1, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were no visions. A generation disappeared, basically, and did not teach the next generation the ways of God. As a result, God's voice had been silenced. I fear we're living in those days, guys. I fear we are. As a result of raising a generation, we are raising a generation that don't know what the Lord has done. And it's reflective in society. If we don't pass on the faith of God to our sons, our daughters, our grandsons, our granddaughters, our nieces, our nephews, even the kids in the neighborhood, the kids in the church, what's going to happen in future generations? What's going to happen? Where's it going to go? Where's our faith going to go? I believe the church has drifted from its original purpose. We've experienced what I can call a mission drift in the church. We've lost the true purpose that we exist for. The church today is more interested in entertainment than seeking the face of God. Church attendants today more have become spectators than participators. We want to come into church on Sunday morning, do our time, and leave. But what happens when we leave? Does it really affect the way we live our lives? We want camera lights and action, but we don't want true conviction and repentance and a life changed. The church is more than about the pastor. The church is about you. You are the church. God has created you to be the church. And God has created you to make a difference in the church. And when I'm talking about the church, I'm not just talking about the building. The church is the community. The church is the state. The church is where you live and, and where you experience life. Hebrews 10, 19 through 25. If we look at it in this passage, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and a living way. Jesus said, I'm going to give you a new and a living way. And there's five times in that passage that he says, let us. First of all, it says, let us draw near to God. And you go to the next slide. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Let us consider how to spur one another on toward love. Let us not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. And lastly, let us encourage one another. There's five times he says, let us. That's a community. That's not one person. That's the body. That's, that's you and me. That's two or three gathered together. You weren't made to be a lone ranger. You weren't made to do this alone. You were made to do it in fellowship with one another. Let us. That's why it's been so messed up over the last couple years. By the way, Jamie, I did do something very special at the last man tour I spoke at. I gave away free toilet paper. I don't know if you remember that, Jamie, but that's, I gave, and Jamie said it's the first man tour toilet paper has ever, ever been given away, so... I have a part in the annals of the uh, mentor. But, but, but the thing about it is, it's, it's gathering together. The last couple years has been messed up, man, because we've been told we have to be separate. The church of the doors, the, the, the doors of the church closed, the buildings. But I think that may not have been a bad thing because it forced us to go outside the walls. The church is not the building, the church is us. You know, uh, I used to have a sign going out on, uh, when you left my church, or the, the church I pastored, when you left the church I pastored, it says, you are now entering the mission field. I had it right as you left. And that's where the church is in action. And why? Because the day is approaching. Let me tell you what. The day is approaching. We've seen it more than ever before, what's going on in the world today. You know, do you agree with me things are a little messed up in the world today? Just a bit. You know, we, we're experiencing the war in Ukraine, political unrest, financial situation, identity confusion, gender identity confusion. And, uh, you know, what is wrong is right. What is right is wrong. And just the other day, I didn't watch it because I don't watch these things, but uh, you know what happened to Chris Rock and um, Will Smith? You know, on, on national television, there was an assault that took place, and everybody's okay with that. Well, I'm glad some people were coming out against it. But they gave the guy an award and gave him a standing ovation after he smacked somebody in the face. Something's wrong with that. Now, we can justify it, but where's self-control? 
We're self-controlled today. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. As Christians, and I, I don't believe he's a Christian. I don't know. But, but what happens is we glorify these things that make no sense at all. And there's so much going on in the world today that make no sense at all, that they mock the Word of God. They mock the Bible. Folks, this can't go on much longer. I can't imagine God sitting back and watching this much longer. And as we as men, we got to do something about it. You know, Jesus says, pick up my cross daily and follow me. The cross is your life. cross is the things in your life, the burdens in your life. Man, life is going to be tough. Nobody said it was going to be easy. I remember a friend of mine, he was a, he was a weightlifter. He was a power lifter. And he used to lift weights with a lot of uh, wrestlers and different people. Like he was a big guy. <clears throat> and he used to wear a T-shirt that said, following Jesus takes guts. Anybody can be a wimp. It takes guts to stand up for your faith and to be counted for your faith. I fear if God is once again saying this from Ezekiel 22, 30, and 31. I look for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before him in a gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it, but I found no one. So I pulled out my wrath on them and consumed them like the fiery anger, bringing down on their own heads all they have done, declares the Lord thy God. Is God letting all this happen because he can't find men to stand in the gap for him? Are we in the condition we are in the world today because we have not stood up for what we believe? Are we in the situation we are today because we're not telling people about Jesus? What are we doing about it? God, God didn't create us to just watch. It drives me crazy. I, I, I was, I've been in sports all my life, and I love to participate, and I love to play ball and different things, and, and I always enjoyed doing that. And as I got older, I couldn't do it anymore, but I'm still on the field. I like, in my mind, I am. You know, my body says, you're crazy, but my mind, I'm there. And, and, and the thing is, I like to get out there, and I like to get things done. I like to participate and do things. And, and the thing is, God didn't call you to be a spectator. He called you to be a participator, to get out there and do things. He didn't call you to just, uh, you know, that's why I go into a NASCAR race. I love to watch it, but I want to drive. I want to get, I want to go fast and not use my brakes. I love that. And, 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 and the thing is, God has called us all not to just watch, but to go and to do something. The first thing is asking Jesus to come into our hearts. That's the first step. The first step. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have this God-shaped hole within us that can only be filled by God's love. God loves you more than you can imagine or think, just the way you are. Yeah, but I'm messed up. Well, God loves you just the way you are. Don't wait till you go to church to get cleaned up. Just go to church and get saved. Let God clean you up. You know, you've come today for a reason. Maybe someone invited you. Maybe you came as a group in the church or, or whatever. But you're here for a reason today. You want more of God. You want to hear something about God. Well, God has a plan for your life, and he loves you, man. I want to tell you, no matter where you are, no matter what you've done, God loves you. And God has a plan for you. And, and the thing is that, you know, once we, 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 once we ask Jesus into our heart, do you remember when you first got saved? I got saved when I was in high school. I was kind of messed. My dad died when I was young, and I kind of got messed up for a little while. And, 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 and after I got saved, I was, I, you know, I witnessed to the elevator. I mean, I witnessed to anything that, you know, I love to, I love to witness to people in elevators, especially, you know, in, in Pittsburgh where I was raised. By the way, how many championships did they win? Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm just a little concerned about our quarterback situation. God, please bring us somebody good. I look at the other teams in the division, I'm thinking, oh, my, my, my. I look at the Steelers, and they're, please, God. Send it. Anyway, and I remember going in elevators. You ever get any elevators where they have two elevators? One goes from, like, floor 1 to 20, and then there's another elevator that goes from floor 20 to 50. And you're in there for a few minutes. One of my favorite things to do is get in those elevators that go by to 1 to 40 or whatever, and you're in there for like three minutes. And I've done this a number of times. It embarrasses my kids and my wife like crazy. We get in the elevators. I love to embarrass my kids, by the way. But uh, you, get, you get in the elevator, 
And one of my favorite things is, is, is I'll say, hi, how y'all doing? You know, nobody talks in elevators. Everybody does this, stands and looks at the numbers. And, and I remember I said this once, and after I did it once, I have to do it all the time. I guess you're wondering why I called you all here today. <laughs> you got a captive audience, man. It's great. And everybody looks at me like I'm on drugs or something. You know, it's a, you're not supposed to talk in elevators, but I love to, man. It's, it's, just, it's just fun to do. It's, it's just a cool thing to do. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? When was the last time you witnessed to somebody? Guys, we'll be back with the remainder of this message right after the break. I know you're going to dig this. Like what you're hearing? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. Thanks. Guys, did you know you can watch all the sessions from the 2022 Ignition Manta conferences for free? Whether you watch them on your own or use them in your church's men's ministry, they are available to view on our Mantor Ministries YouTube channel as well as at mantorministries.com slash 2022 conference videos. Check out these session videos as well as the session videos for past mentors for free. They are great resources to help you grow in your walk with God. So take advantage of these free conference sessions today. The Mentor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God. Will you be a ride or die man of God? This is the challenge contained in the pages of our new book for men. Ride or Die examines the lives of 10 men who set an amazing example of extreme loyalty to God. No matter what he asked or what circumstances they faced, they always fist pumped and said, let's do this, I'll ride or die with you. Each chapter challenges us to follow in their footsteps and accept the call to be men who are wholeheartedly devoted to God. Filled with practical applications for today's culture, this book will inspire you to say, I'll ride or die with God. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. Don't forget to visit iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. Guys, have you liked and followed Mantor Ministries on Facebook? If not, this is the perfect time to do it. We really stepped up our social media game to bring you content Monday through Thursday throughout the year. You can watch short video clips from the Mantors, be inspired by quote images, and stay informed of everything happening at Mantor Ministries simply by liking and following us on Facebook. So take time today, Go to Facebook and search for Mantor Ministries and like and follow us. Do it today, guys. Welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Welcome back as we continue listening to this powerful message. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? When was the last time you witnessed to somebody? When was the last time you shared your personal story with someone of what God has done in your life? Everybody has a testimony. You know, whether you've been saved since birth or whether you've been saved from a life of crime and whatever, everybody has a testimony of what God has done in your life. When was the last time you shared it with somebody? You see, when we come to believe in Jesus, it says in John 20, 21, when we come to believe in Jesus, Jesus, what he did was with his followers after he rose from the dead, he was speaking to them, and what he did is, is he, he, in John 20, 21, Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. What happened? The Holy Spirit came to live in them. The presence of God came to live in them. Came to be, uh, be a part of them. And then, and, and the presence of God makes a difference in your life. We're going to see this in just a minute. And then, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he told his disciples to go to Jerusalem and stay there and wait, and they'll receive another gift of the Father. Acts 1.8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. See, when you get saved, the presence of God comes to live within you. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, the power of God comes to live within you. There's his presence, then here's his power. We need his power today in our lives. We need his presence, yes. But we need his power. Uh, a race car needs an engine that's that big to accomplish the goal that's set before it. If it just had a normal engine, it wouldn't be able to keep up. And it wouldn't go anywhere. It'd have no power. 
And us, we need power in our lives to accomplish the goal God has called us to accomplish. We really do. We were created by the Heavenly Father to go. Now we need to quit sitting around making excuses and tap into the power that's available to us. Many of us here in this room have taken up the cross. We're saved. Now it's time to do something with that cross. Now it's time to go somewhere and to do something. Instead of just sitting around and let others do it. We have an untapped 750 God-powered engine within us waiting to be ignited. To push the ignition button and let it go. Let the power go. And you know what's cool? Once you start experiencing the power of God in your life, you want more. You don't want less. You want more. Because you realize, I never realized I could do that before. Well, the fact is, you couldn't do it before. You couldn't do it before. Power makes a difference in our lives. Look at Peter in the, old, in, in the New Testament. Peter was passionate. You know, he was emotional. He was, you know... By the, by the way, guys, have you ever seen uh, the series Chosen, the, 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 the series? Man, I'm telling you, you got to watch it, man. It, 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 it is so cool. It brings, Jesus is so cool. You know, Jesus is talking to, to James and John, the, thons, the sons of thunder, and he's messing with them. I mean, he's encouraging them. He's blessing them. It's just cool. He says, what's wrong with you guys, man? Quit your fighting. You have such a power within you. Take it in the right direction. Jesus is just so cool. And, and John, John's always wanting to beat somebody up. And, 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 and the, but if you haven't done it, you can download it. Uh, you know, and and uh, I, I've, I emailed Dallas Jenkins, and I said, for how many times I've promoted his chosen, he should, you know, let me know. But really, you guys need to uh, check it out. It, you can go on, you can get an app called The Chosen, and you can watch it for free. And that's my commercial for the day. But in there, Peter had a passion he had a power, but it was focused in the wrong direction. And he, 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 was, he was encouraging, and it was, but, but something happened to him after he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Something happened to him. You know, before he was driven by his emotions, now he's driven by the Spirit. Zechariah tells us in Zechariah 4, 6, not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. You see, his Spirit is the power in you. And Zerubbabel was building the temple at the time. And they were having trouble building the temple. And, and, and what, what Zerubbabel said, well, well, I mean, what Zachariah said, hey, guys, listen to me. He says, it's not by your might that you're building this temple, but you're building it for the power of God. You're building it for God. You're doing this for God. Let's do it for him. Let's do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit, as you look at it in the book of Acts, it, it healed the sick. It raised the dead. He transformed lives, empowered others to do things they never thought they could do before. The presence and the power in your life makes all the difference. In the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 33, Moses was the pastor. You know, Moses was the pastor of, 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 the, of, of millions of people in the Old Testament. What a job he had. And, and, and Moses led him out of the promised land. I mean, let him out of, uh, of corruption, of slavery, into the promised land. And he was having a challenging time. He went up to get the Ten Commandments, and while he was up there, people got a little impatient. And so what they did is they, they, they wanted somebody to worship, something to worship. So what they did, this is cool. You need to read this in Exodus 33. This is, this is, this is, this is cool. And what they did was is, is they took all their jewelry and they put it in the fire. All their jewelry they put in the fire. And Aaron describes it like this. Well, I, I, I don't know what happened, Moses. I mean, I mean, we took all the jewelry, put it in the fire, and boom, a calf came out. That's what he said. It's just, it, it just kind of happened. It just kind of came out. And Moses got a little upset. And he said, what am I going to do with these people you gave me, God? These stiff-necked people. He says, I don't want, I don't want these people. And it's, it's interesting. It's cool because Moses used to go away to this place called the tent meeting. He'd go and he'd spend time with God, meeting with him face to face. And he was meeting with him face to face one time. And he said, Lord, I don't know what to do with these people. And the Lord replied in Exodus 33, 14, 
my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said, if your presence does not go with us, don't send us anywhere. In other words, Moses said, if your presence doesn't go with me, I don't want to go. Do you hear what I said? If your presence, we shouldn't go anywhere without the presence of God. Nowhere. And here it is. This is the question. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? And watch here. What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? I want to read it from the Living Bible one time. This is a paraphrase, so don't throw things at me. This is not a translation. It's a paraphrase. Okay, here we go. And the Lord replied, I myself will go with you and give you success. For Moses had said, if you aren't going with us, don't let us move a step from this place. If you don't go with us, who will ever know that I and my people have found favor with you? and that we are different from any other people on the face of the earth. You know what makes us as believers different from anybody else on the face of the earth? The presence of God is living in us. The presence of God has his mark upon you. People should know you are different because the presence of God is in you. You carry the presence of God everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, you carry his presence. You are his presence. He can't be here physically, so you carry his presence. That'll freak you out when you think about it. Moses said, if your presence doesn't go with me, I don't want to go. Then God told Joshua, I'll be with you when you go into the land. My presence will go with you. In Joshua 1.5, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. God told Joshua when he went into the promised land, I am with you. My presence is with you. I'll go with you wherever you go, as I said before. And I I love this story about the presence of God. The presence of God was so strong with Elisha the prophet. He, he He carried God's presence so strong, even after he was dead. Look at this next passage of Scripture from 2 Kings. Once while some Israelites were burying a man, suddenly they saw a band of raiders, so they threw the dead man's body into Elijah's tomb. When the body touched Elisha's bone, the man came to life and stood up at his feet. Freak me out! (laughs) Elisha carried the presence of God so strong that even after he was dead, it was still there. Wow. Wow. Let me tell you what. You carry the presence of God with you. After you're gone, your influence will still be there. You understand what I'm saying? People will have a memory of you. What are they going to remember? Are they going to remember the presence of God being in your life? Are you going to carry his presence beyond the physical life to others around you? Do you see it? God's presence and the Holy Spirit in your life distinguishes you from everyone else on the face of the earth. But do we recognize it? Because God does. So do we recognize it? And what's even more amazing, you know who else recognizes it? The devil. The devil knew who Jesus was. And the devil knows if the presence of God lives within you. That's why he tries to mess you up sometimes. If you're not following after Jesus, the devil's not going to mess with you. He already has you. So he's not going to mess with you. That's why every day we need to get up and put on the full armor of God to protect ourselves. And just remember, in the full armor of God, if you look at it, there's no protection for the back because he wants us to go forward. He wants us to hit it head on. And he gives us everything we need to accomplish the task that he's called us to do. God's presence, the Holy Spirit in your life, distinguishes you from everyone else on the face of the earth. The scriptures go to tell us in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 about the gifts of the Spirit that are available. The gifts of the Spirit empower the calling of God in our lives and help us to accomplish all that God has for us. 1 Peter 4, 10 tells us, each one of you has received a special gift. Employ it in serving one another. You have a gift from God. 
You are called by God for something specific, something particular. Your number one calling is the great commandment to go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's not just the pastor's calling. That's your calling too. It may be in a different, you may not be in a professional calling to do that. But God has called you to tell people about Jesus. And he's empowered you to do what he's called you to do with the Holy Spirit. And he said, God God called you when you become a Christian. God says, okay, you have my spirit living in you. My presence is in you. And you know what? And to accomplish the goal that I have for you, I'm not only going to give you my presence, I'm going to give you my power as well. My power is in you if you just ask for it. There's an untapped power in each one of us that's just waiting to be exploded so we can be lean, mean, witnessing machines for God. Have you ever had trouble witnessing to somebody? But God says, I want to give you my power so you can do it. Peter had that problem. And God said, I'm going to give you my spirit so it can make a difference in other people's lives. God created you with a purpose. The purpose, first of all, is to come in relationship with him. Second of all, is to take somebody with you. To take somebody to heaven with you. Again, that's not just your pastor's job. That's our job. Men, the only hope for America is God. I'm telling you, politicians aren't going to do it. The media, well, let's not go there. You know, it, it, it's not anyone else's job but us. We're going to make the difference. And the thing is, we have, God has given us everything we need to accomplish that task. When Jesus said, if you want to be one of my disciples, you need to pick up my cross daily and follow after me. What that entails is doing whatever it takes. We quit too easy. When things get rough, we quit. And I think God, sometimes, back in the day, I remember, I had the privilege when I was a young boy, and some of you may not even realize, or know who this is, but I had the privilege of a young boy of going to hear Catherine Coleman. She was an evangelist back in the day. And, and, and just God used her, and she was, how do I say this and be nice? This is recorded, right, Jane? How do I say this? Minutes? Catherine Coleman was a bit different. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. But God used her incredible ways. Hey, guys, y'all are different. Some of you are really different, let me see. But God wants to use you in incredible ways. And the thing is, he said that I've seen you. Before you were born, I knew you. And I have a plan for you. And that plan is to give you a hope for the future and to prosper you and to do good things in your life. First of all, we're going to have an altar call in just a minute. I'd like to... I want to play the keyboard. If you could just come up and play for me a little bit. First of all, God has a plan for your life. The first, step in, the first step in receiving that plan is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. In just a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask you to come forward and stand here. Asking Jesus to come into your life takes guts. But, you know, many of us in this room have done it and never regret it. The second thing I'm going to ask, you haven't felt the power of God's presence in your life for quite some time. And I'm going to ask you to come forward. And as you come forward, we're going to pray a prayer together, asking God to fill fill us with his presence and fill us with his power so we can make a difference. We're approaching the finish line. Many of us, some of us, because of our age. But I believe if we look at society that we live in today, Jesus, I believe, I believe God's in heaven saying, I want to come, I want to send my son back. I want to send him back. These people need Jesus. What's holding it back? I believe one of the main things that's holding it back today is the church. Because it says in the last days there'll be a great 
incoming, a revival. And the thing is, we have all what it takes. <clears throat> but we're not, we don't have the guts to stand up and say, fill me with your power and presence. I want to make a difference. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. You know, some people are so afraid of being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we get to speak in tongues, we get the gifts, we get the fruit, we get so many. God just pours out himself in you. Just say, God, I want more. Do you want more today? Stand up with me, everybody. If you've never accepted Jesus into your life before, man, let me tell you again. God loves you just the way you are. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for you. And he just wants you to say, I surrender my life to you. Work your plan out in my life. The Bible tells us all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell, yes. But also saved from a life takes you in the wrong direction. Do you want to ask Jesus into your heart today? I'm going to ask you to come and stand in the front here. Just a few minutes. Others are going to come stand with you. Is there anyone here today you've never accepted Jesus into your heart and you want to do it today? I'm going to invite you to come. Sometimes it's hard. And I'm going to ask you to do something as you stand there. Turn to the person next to you. Say, you want to go? I'll go with you. Go ahead, do it. That's all you need to say. You want to go? I'll go with you. Now, the second question. I'm taking that as a sign that people in this room know Jesus. But do you want filled with his presence and his power like you've been, never been filled before? Do you want more of Jesus in your life? Do you want more of his power? Do you want more of his presence? Come and stand here with me. I'm standing here because I want it. I'm not satisfied with where I am in my faith. If you are, you need to re-examine yourself. And by coming forward, we're saying, God, fill me with your presence. Fill me with your power. I want more of you in my life. I want the power in my life to affect everyone around me. I want people to know I carry God's presence in my life. I want the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be set free in my life. Do you want that today? Let's pray together. First of all, I want you to do me a favor. Just put out your hands. Because we are going to receive, like you're going to receive something from somebody. If I had, if, if, if I had a million dollars that I was going to give you, Mark Caston said, here's a million dollars, Jeff. Can you give it to somebody? So I'm going to give you a million dollars. You're going to receive something right now. And then I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. It's first of all, it's a prayer of asking Jesus to come into your heart and to cleanse you once again. And then it's, it's, it's a plea for God to fill you with his presence and his power. It's, it's, it's a prayer asking God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And then we're going to spend a few minutes just praising him. So will you do this with me? Dear Father in heaven, I thank you for Jesus. Thank you that Jesus died for me. That he lived for me. And he's living for me today. Forgive me. I rededicate my life to live for him. Fill me today with your presence. I don't want to go anywhere without your presence in my life. Fill me today with your Holy Spirit. Pour out your Spirit in my life. I want more of you. I want more of your Spirit. I want more of your power to accomplish the goal of going and telling others about Jesus. Come on, let's start praising Him right now. Out loud. Come on, let's start praising Him. Come on, let's praise Him right now. Hallelujah. Come on. We praise you, oh God. We pray for you.
your love with others. To be a witness. As we pick up the cross, as we go to places we've never gone before, Lord, I pray that your power will guide us and direct us. That the gifts of the Spirit will be given to us as we need. That the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, that these, these fruit will grow up from within us because we're watering them with your word. Let me tell you, spend time in God's presence. Spend that time in prayer and reading the Bible and fellowship with others. Come on, guys, let's make a difference. Let's not just sit around anymore. Let's get in the race. Let's get in the race. Let's make a difference. Father, we thank you. Praise you. Come on, let's thank you one more time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The Mentor Guy's final thought. This year's conferences were absolutely phenomenal. I have to admit, this year's theme of Ride or Die has been my absolute favorite theme that we've done at Mentors over the nine years. It really connected with the men as well. I love seeing the men come to the altars committing to Ride or Die with God, no matter what society or other people think about it or criticize them for doing it. God moves so mightily this year, and I'm glad we got to bring these messages to you. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Thanks again for taking the time to listen. We'd love it if you took a minute and shared this podcast to your social media. This allows more listeners to find us. Also, subscribe and leave a five-star rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. Also, don't forget to head over to MantorMinistries.com and check out all we have to offer. You can read the first chapter of most of our books for free and find links to purchase the entire book. You can watch all the sessions for the 2022 Ignition Mentors for free as well as read, new, read all of our newsletters. We have so much for you at the website, guys. Check it out today. Finally, I encourage you to like and follow Mentor Ministries on Facebook. We've really stepped our social media game up. We are posting new content Monday through Thursday, so make sure not to miss any of it. But guys, we're out of time for this week. One quick note, we're going to be taking off a week from the podcast to celebrate the birthday of the greatest country on earth. So we'll be back with you in two weeks. Have a great 4th of July, party like it's 1776, and God bless America. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on the Mantor Guy Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Be sure to visit MantorMinistries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our Mantor Conferences. You already know the basics of keeping your kids safe online. Maybe you keep your computer in a public place or you check the browsing history. But did you know that 67% of kids admit to clearing their browsing history? And what about their iPod Touch or their Android tablet? At Covenant Eyes, we want to make it easy for you to protect your kids. And that's why we've created family accounts with all of the users you need and free installation on all of your family's computers, smartphones, and tablets. For a flat rate of $13.99 a month, you can give each person in your home a unique, customized internet experience by giving everyone their own username. Every username gets internet accountability, meaning everyone's browsing history will show up on their own personal accountability report. You can even add the filter to any username for free. So go ahead, start protecting your kids by knowing exactly where they go and what they do online. And we'll be here to help you along the way. So sign up today. Sign up for Covenant Eyes using the code MANTOR at checkout and receive one month of free service. Visit CovenantEyes.com today to sign up. And remember, one month of free service when you use the code MANTOR. That's M-A-N-T-O-U-R. Will you ride or die with God's word? Join the ride to take part in this year-long Bible reading plan designed to help you become a strong, on-fire, ride-or-die man of God. The 365-day ride-or-die Bible plan features 52 devotionals from pastors, speakers, and men's leaders, six days of Bible reading, and a devotional on the seventh day. It has relevant topics for men to aid in your spiritual growth. It also features a verse of the day and hand-selected Bible passages to keep you engaged all year long. This year, you can join the Ride or Die Bible Plan two ways. 
You can receive it for free via email beginning January 1st, 2022. Or for the first time ever, we have made our year-long Bible plan available in a paperback version that you can purchase to have a physical copy. To join this Bible plan, visit mantorministries.com slash Bible plan. Guys, take advantage of this year-long Bible reading plan. Become a part of it. Become a man of the word. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God.